the uh, history of Black people in the Americas does not begin with slavery. And it certainly isn't the um, defining experience. Unfortunately, within our education system, because it is Eurocentric, and oftentimes very much um, people would say on a white supremacist model, you don't even get a complete history. So we, we do have to kind of go back then and try to re-educate ourselves in a more holistic way so that we can actually get the complete colonial history to understand what this present situation is. You know, as an adult, I really had no idea all of this information and I had to seek out special classes. So how can we talk to children about slavery and talk about slavery in productive ways with our families and our friends until we can revolutionize the educational system to include it as a part of our history? So when we think about the, I would say the greatest, most impactful um, legacy of the slave system would be this um, concept of race, it would be racism. So you have race, as we understand it in the present day, was created in the 1600s as a justification of this new form of slavery, created during that time period to justify this new enterprise of the transatlantic slave trade, which ends up being a trillion dollar industry. You cannot have um, the capitalist system without racism. It is completely dependent on it. So when we look at our current, our current battles, you see people protesting in the streets and um, denouncing all forms of racism. If you want to undo racism, you, it's not independent of these things. Racism is caught up in so many, it's a system that catches so many other systems within it. And the big one, is capitalism. Many of us convince ourselves we're incapable of because we need Amazon, because we're too busy, because we're working three jobs and we're taking care of our kids. So, you know, we want to eat that food that supports agriculture that is not environmentally negative, but we can't afford it. You know, we sort of- well, There have been systems set up with, within these industries to make sure that the alternative is always going to look less attractive where you just have a few large corporations in charge of the food chain, in charge of all these things, how easily volatile these systems are. So I haven't necessarily seen this conversation come to light about the um, dealing with these corporations. How do we detach ourselves from Amazon, Walmart, Target from all of these? Because they contribute, we wanna talk about slavery, they're benefiting from right. <laughs> slavery in this country and across the world. Like you literally have people dying on the job at Amazon, dying on right. the floor, being overworked. Um, you look around, you see these are poor people. They're mainly people of color, immigrants, plenty of people who are undocumented, who are desperate. You see the, the head of Amazon just made billions of dollars off of this coronavirus. So this information is not unaccessible to us, but the system that we're entrapped in keeps us financially oppressed into which we might be sickened, but are still handing over our funds to these corporations. It organizes the way that it has been able to organize our lives. It's incredible. You, you see that so strongly within housing. You know, New York City remains, I think to this day, the most segregated city in the United States. That you know this, when you, you get on the subway, like I'm gonna take the five train. You know the stop where all the white people get off. You know where the Latinos are going to get off. You know where the black people are going to get off. That is extreme segregation. Right. <laughs> I mean, unbelievable. Like we've got, we know the, the coordinates <laughs> where the different racial groups are. That's incredible. Which then affects things like school segregation. Why are the schools segregated? Because your housing is segregated. Right. You can't have a desegregating school until you tackle that housing. Well, nobody wants to touch the housing situation. I also never knew about redlining. Um, I never was taught about the racial discrepancies in the New Deal. You know, FGR was always presented to me as just the hero of all heroes, the, cons the Democrat that even Republicans like, you know, there's this hero. And this information was never presented to me. And so now thinking of this conversation, it's like, oh, that's how it's able to perpetuate and just morph in new ways because it's been happening all along. But if we're not aware of it, 
you know, like with this train, of course I knew that was true, but that is not something that I've heard people really talk about and that, or I've really even talked about, even though it affected me on my own commute. But of course, because ever since I was a child, all of these interlocking systems have been hidden from me and my counterparts. Or they've been naturalized. Right. Right? Like you've been um, enculturated to believe that this was just the way things are and there's nothing that can be done. Right. Right. So why bother to even talk about it? Right. We can't change this. This is not sort of been turned. There's nothing we can do. And I remember a student um, making the comment, well, racism has always been around. It'll always be here. I'm like, no, it hasn't. Racism is new in human history. Human beings have been around for something like 40,000 years. Racism has only been around like 500. <laughs> like this is extremely new and extremely recent. Right. It hasn't always been around and it doesn't have to either. We can absolutely undo it. Right? You have to understand it and how it's working and how it's so deeply intertwined in all of our existing systems in order for you to undo it. This battle we're fighting is intersectional. You have to fight it in an intersectional way. You, you can never independently deal with racism. It's, it doesn't exist like as an abstraction out there by itself, like, oh, there it is, now we're gonna tackle it, we're just gonna catch every white woman who calls the police on a black man and problem solved. That's not how this works. <laughs> this is, racism is a system that we're all in. So we have to understand the ways in which that system works. And even more importantly, we have to understand the ways in which we perpetuate that system. It needs us to keep going. So what are you doing that you're not even aware of that's helping maintain this system. Oh, this is part of the battle too, that now I have to look at all of my beliefs and under, if I really wanna understand this. And most people don't even understand that queerness is at the center of the Black Lives Matter movement. Yet you still have all of this homophobia and transphobia, even among black people in this country, right. extremely strong, right? The same people who are like Black Lives Matter and marching, are transphobic, homophobic, et cetera. Yet you have queer women who started Black Lives Matter. Right. This is extremely problematic. <laughs> right? right? You either, it's not some Black Lives Matter, it's Black Lives Matter. Right. This is a global phenomenon where you see people of color living in um, these conditions that shorten their life and police violence in particular uh, against bodies of color, like horrible, horrible police violence in Latin America and the Caribbean against people of color that isn't being um, recognized or called out in the way that it should. So we, we have to always look outside of not just ourselves, you know, of course you look introspectively, reflectively, you think about yourself and your own experience, you're decolonizing yourself, decolonizing your own education and realizing, wow, my education is US centric, this is problematic. That, that's what I hope most people do too, is that, okay, the United States does not represent even the black experience in the Americas. It's so, it's so different, it's such a small part of it. I have to now look across the region and look at what the activists are doing in Brazil and Colombia and Argentina and these other places and see how are they organizing? What can I learn from them, right? Which I think is, there's so much to be learned there. And what can we learn from each other? What can we exchange? So for us to have a movement, this is a movement that's gonna be global, then we have to take this globalized intersectional approach.